Here, what's up Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at again with another New York Giants update video. I told y'all you guys were going to get a late one tonight as, you know, I, I had to go out. Before I went out, the Giants make a big splash in free agency. At least I'm using the term big as a relative one compared to the amount of cap space we had and compared to the fact that, well, a lot of us were led to believe by the Giants themselves, by Joe Shane, by other sources that we may not be making any type of signings, right? And then while I was out about an hour after, there was another one and they both were on the offensive line. Now, if I sound a bit quieter, I apologize. I'm gonna try to boost my volume up in editing. It's like 12 a.m. right now. So I'm trying not to make too much noise. But first and foremost, the Giants did re-sign two wide receivers. I do want to cover that real quick and get it over with. CJ Borby re-signed, was a good depth piece for us last year. Also good special teams ace. And then a newcomer from the Buffalo Bills, Joe Shane and Brian Dable connection, and Robert Foster. He was somebody that saw time usually when Isaiah McKenzie wasn't available. Also 100% another depth piece. Not too much to read into here. The Giants are just trying to have some sort of wide receiver depth to go into the offseason. Possibly into the season, we'll see if these guys make the final cut for the final roster. But, you know, wide receiver is definitely a position of need still. And the biggest position of need, which I, I told you guys multiple times on streams and in videos, that I had a feeling this regime was going to attack heavily was offensive line. Because coming from the Buffalo Bills and Joe Shane and Ryan Dable, one of their biggest needs over the past couple years has been edge rushers. And they've continuously, in multiple years back to back, attacked the edge rushing group both in free agency and in the draft. Now, with offensive line being our biggest need, I think everybody and their mother thought that we were going to both sign a lineman if possible and then draft linemen. That's what we did. Well, <laughs> Mark Glowinski from the Indianapolis Colts, their right guard, starting right guard since 2018, which by the way, remember before 2018, the Colts had a horrible offensive line. Since 2018, with the drafting of Quinton Nelson and signing of free agents like Mark Glowinski, they've been one of the best, if not the best offensive lines in the league. But we got him on a really really good deal man the the salary cap breakdown of his contract is crazy he's only making three million dollars this year and then he's making other money moving forward but it's a total of three years 20 million with 11.4 million guaranteed and then i want to say about an hour maybe hour and a half after that the giants go out and they sign john feliciano who well i definitely thought we were gonna sign him i kind of called it a couple weeks ago on the Just Chillin' Podcast with Manny Madrigal. Shout out to Manny. You, you were getting to. Yeah, I, I think that'd be a good move. And I think one guy that they're not talking about, or if they talk to, I, they haven't talked about him enough out there in the sphere. Um, John Feliciano, more, there's a good chance he may be a cap casualty by the Bills. I think he's a decent guard. I think he would be a guy, you know, you're not going to break the bank for him. He's already gotten, he's already gotten the bag twice. I think he comes in and there's familiarity with the O-line coach, there's familiarity with the quarterback coach, the OC, obviously. You know, I think he can come in and be that stability at guard. If nothing else, just be that guy there, keeping it warm for whoever would be the next guard to come in. But a, a good player, not a uh, Matt Skura. Or, uh, I, well, yeah, if they cut him, I'm definitely you know. looking at him for sure. Because uh, yeah, like I agree with guy. you. He was already on like a three-year, 12 or three-year, $14 million deal with the Bills. I expect him to sign for at that or less at this point in his career. And we got John Feliciano on a really good deal as well. <laughs> Feliciano is actually on a one-year deal with the Giants. And he's coming in kind of a twist. It's a one-year prove-it deal. Instead of playing his usual guard, he will be playing center. And I'll get to that in a minute. Because I do want to talk about Mark Lewinsky for a second. I feel like this is going to be one of those kind of under the radar, quote unquote, underrated signings of the offseason. This was a guy that was very important to the Coles offensive line. I'm not saying that he's irreplaceable, but he's really good. We somehow, some way, got a mid-tier signing, maybe even more, more than mid-tier. Because he's above average, he's really good. He's not Pro Bowl level, you know, he's not Kevin Zeitler. But he's like almost like a level right below those type of offensive linemen which is something that any team could use because he's a proven starter and veteran. And also, it's a major upgrade compared to what we were running with just the year before at guards. In fact, it's such a major, major upgrade. Let me read to you guys a couple of PFF grades just of by O-line, right? Mark has a 70.1 PFF grade. The guys on the roster last year had a 62.3 in Billy Price, 
a 55.9 in Will Hernandez, and a 50.8 in Matt Skura. And let's not forget Shane Lemieux's rookie year, where he had a terrible one. I think it was like 20 points something. Now, obviously, PFF grades aren't great, or uh, not great, I should say. They're not the end-all, be-all, but it is a good measurement because what are you really going to measure by offensive linemen? There's, not, there's no stats. You can measure how many sacks they've given up, which last year he only gave up two sacks in over 800-plus snaps. He's, he's really good. He, he only gave up eight QB hits. The pressures were a bit high. Admittedly, the pressures were a bit high. We'll see if that is something that takes form with the Giants as well. But he's a massive upgrade. And, and he's all automatically our second best offensive lineman. And I don't feel ashamed in saying that he's our second best offensive lineman. Before he got here, our second best offensive lineman was probably, I don't know, um, Shane Lemieux? Maybe it was Shane Lemieux. And I did feel a little bit ashamed of saying that because he's not that good. But this guy is. And he's he's an absolute monster in the run game from what I brought up on. He's okay in the passing game. But we could work with that because last year, even though we didn't have the best offensive lineman, the Giants were scheming up okay pass protection at times. So it's shown that that could be schemed. What they couldn't scheme up was the run blocking and creation of run lanes. So I expect that to be a, a little bit of a emphasis as well with the specific guys that they'll be targeting. With John Feliciano coming over now from the Bills, like I said, it was somebody I wanted without a doubt, and it is on one of those cheap contracts, so I'm very happy about it. I am a little concerned on the fact that he's coming to play center and not guard, because when I was looking at him, I was 100% looking at him coming in as a starting guard. And yes, he is a starter. Um, You don't need a Pro Bowl caliber talent at every spot at the offensive line. You just need really good offensive linemen or a unit that as a whole produces a really good offensive line. You got Andrew Thomas, who in my opinion could be Pro Bowl level. Then you got Matt Glowinski, who like I said, I think is like just that level below. You got John Feliciano, who's I'd say about average. And those are three good offensive linemen. You obviously still need your left guard and your right tackle. And the way it's looking, if they, you know, this Bill's uh, origin regime continues attacking the position in need, we're going to get our right tackle in the draft and possibly even our left guard in the draft. And hey, on paper, on paper, I don't want to get too excited, but on paper, that is a good offensive line. That is at the very least an average offensive line. Now, the reason I'm, I'm kind of worried about John Feliciano doesn't even have something to do with him in general. Because like I said, you know, he's an average guy. He's a good starter. He's somebody that got your QB back. So he has that, you know, that loyalty and that nastiness that's needed at center. I think he's going to be very much a Nick Gates for this Giants team with Nick Gates out. The only problem I have with it is, is just in general, you know, I would rather have somebody that has been a center for their entire career play center because I think it's the second most position, second most important position on the line. It's a little bit underrated. The communication you need to have with the rest of the line and the QB. And it's really hard to snap a ball and then get up into blocking position. Not a lot of people can do it. That's why not a lot of guards that move to centers work out. And we did that last year, I believe, after Billy Price went down. And it's just, I would prefer to have somebody that played center there at the position. But like I said, he's going to be a good, at the very least, average starter, right? And with Matt Glowinski, you're going to get somebody really, really good. But I'm just really, I'm so happy with these signings because at least the first one kind of came out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting it. Everything was pointing towards we were going to set out a little bit. We were going to get a little bit of leftovers. But somehow, someway, Joe Shane, Brian Dable, and Kevin Abrams, because he's kind of getting lost now. People consider him such a big part of the Dave Yellman regime, but he is a cap master. But just look at what he's done with Blake Martinez. I even haven't even gotten to speak about that in a video yet, but we'll talk about it in the stream. In fact, we'll talk about Blake Martinez tomorrow, or I should say today when you guys will see it, in the Just Chill and Colin stream. We'll talk about Evan Ingram as well. Because we're definitely taking a starting tight end in this draft. Don't kid yourself about it. I don't think we're signing one. And we're definitely taking a right tackle. There's a lot of things to talk about. But with this news specifically, I'm so happy. They're attacking the position need. They're not ignoring it. After a year where it was a clear need that we still needed to improve the offensive line. You know, in 2021, the Giants didn't do anything. They didn't sign anybody. They didn't draft anybody. We have three signings already. And two of these three signings are legitimate starters. Matt Gano, you know what I'm saying? I like him. I like the signing. I, I view him very much as a swing tackle, though. Really good depth. And if Shane Lemieux becomes depth, he will be really good depth. He's a really bad starter, but he's going to be great depth, if that makes sense. I just love it, and I can't wait to see where to go with it. If you guys put your thoughts down below, I'll like, share, subscribe, and I'm out.
Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe, and I'm out.